Hey guys, it's Anch. Welcome to my very first video on this channel. And I couldn't think of a better way to kick things off than by diving into something straight out of science fiction. Flying cars. Alright, imagine this. You're late for work, stuck in traffic, and instead of sitting there, you just take off. No waiting, no honking, just straight into the sky? Sounds insane, right? Well, flying cars are actually happening. I mean, I grew up watching flying cars in movies and flipping through sci-fi books. But I never thought I'd live in a time where I might look up and see one over my own house. Big companies like Joby Aviation, Archer, and even Boeing are betting billions on this tech. And some cities are already preparing for these flying taxis. They could seriously change the way we travel. No more endless traffic jams, way faster commutes, and maybe even a cleaner environment. But here's the catch. Making this work isn't as simple as just sticking wings on a car. There are some huge challenges ahead, from figuring battery limitations to figuring out how to control air traffic. And let's be real, do we really just trust anyone to be flying up around there? I mean, I don't even trust myself. Flying cars are not a new idea. The concept has been around for over a century, but the tech just wasn't ready. The first attempt was in the 1940s with an aero car, which was a car that could have wings attached to it, allowing it to take off and fly. I mean, yes, it does sound cool in theory, but completely impractical. Over the decades, more prototypes have emerged, but they've all faced the same issues. How do you stop flying cars from crashing into each other? Where do they land and take off from? Who controls the airspace when everyone's flying? But now, we have the materials and technology to make flying cars a real possibility. Most modern flying cars aren't actually cars in the traditional sense. Instead, they're EV tolls, electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicles. Unlike helicopters or planes that rely on gas-powered engines, EV tolls use electric motors powered by lithium-ion batteries. Basically like a Tesla, but in the sky. Here are some of the major players leading the charge. Joby Aviation, one of the biggest names in the game. They've already tested their EV tolls in New York City and aim for commercial flights by 2025. We also have Archer Aviation, which has partnered with United Airlines to bring flying taxis to airports for fast connections. There's also Uber Elevate, which is working on a rideshare style flying car service like Uber, but also in the sky. So how did these cars actually work? Well, flying cars today don't look like the sleek jet powered vehicles we see in movies. Instead, they rely on electric propulsion systems with multiple rotors to provide both lift and thrust. These advanced aircrafts are designed to be energy efficient, quieter than helicopters, and capable of vertical takeoff and landing, which means they don't need long runways or traditional airports. Depending on the design, EV tolls use different approaches to balance power, stability, and efficiency. Here are the three main designs shaping the future of flying cars. The multi-rotor, drone style. Think of this as a supersized drone that carries passengers. It uses multiple fixed rotors to provide lift and stability, making it highly maneuverable and capable of per precise vertical takeoffs and landing. However, these designs consume a lot of power, which limits their range and flight time. There's also the tilt rotor style. These EV tolls feature rotors that can tilt mid-flight, allowing them to take off like a helicopter and then transition in a forward flight like an airplane. This design is more energy efficient than multi-rotor models because it reduces power consumption once airborne, leading to longer flight ranges. Finally, there's the fixed wing EV tolls. These designs incorporate wings for improved aerodynamics, meaning they can glide and use less energy while cruising. While they do require a short runway for some or some forward movement for takeoff, they offer greater range and efficiency, making them ideal for longer trips. So let's talk about the challenges of charging these flying cars. Charging these vehicles isn't as simple as plugging in an electric car. No, flying cars require high powered vertiports, which are specialized charging stations designed to handle the massive energy demands of EV tolls. This does cause some problems though, as cities would need to build a completely new charging network with vertiports basically placed at every popular and strategic location. Charging time is another issue, as fast charging technology is still developing. Even the best current ba battery systems require significant downtime. A citywide EV toll system would also require enormous amounts of electricity, potentially straining the power grid. To make flying cars possible, we need significant advancements in battery energy density. Some promising technologies that could change the game include solid-state batteries, 
which are higher energy density and faster charging times than traditional lithium ion batteries. Lithium air batteries is another possibility. It could potentially offer five times the range of current battery systems. Lastly, hydrogen fuel cells is an alternative to batteries, which could provide longer flight times with faster refueling. Well, until these breakthroughs happen, the battery problem remains one of the biggest obstacles to widespread adoption of these flying cars. Personally, I believe flying taxis will cost a lot. Right now, companies claim that flying taxi rides will cost about the same as an Uber. But let's be real, we've heard this before. When self-driving cars were first being developed, they were supposed to be affordable right away. Well, they weren't. When electric cars hit the market, only the rich could afford them. I think the same thing is going to happen here. The first flying taxis will likely cost hundreds of dollars per ride. So let's be honest, who's really going to be using them? Not the average commuter. Companies aren't building these for everyday people just yet. Instead, they're targeting wealthy business travelers who are willing to pay premium prices to skip traffic. Over time, as technology improves and production scales up, prices may drop, just like they did with electric cars. But at first, flying taxis will be a luxury, not a mainstream travel option. Wait, what happens if this actually works? Like, let's assume we solve all the tech hurdles, better batteries, smarter AI, reliable flying taxis. What does that mean for us? Well, imagine cutting a 45 minute drive in LA down to just five minutes. There would be no more traffic and no more cramming into expensive cities. People could just fly to work. There would also be a whole new industry created from this. There would be pilots, maintenance workers, air traffic controllers, and vertiport operators to be in high demand. Honestly, I can't lie. I'm so hyped to ride in one of these. The idea of lifting off into the sky and skipping traffic, incredible. But at the same time, trusting a battery powered drone to carry me hundreds of feet in the air is kind of terrifying. No roadside pullovers, no emergency lane, just me, the sky, and a whole lot of feet in technology. Still, if someone offered me a ride right now, I'd 100% take it. What about you? Would you guys take a flying taxi if it cost $200 per ride? Or do you think this is just another overhyped tech trend? Drop a comment below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And hey, if you enjoyed this deep dive, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you don't miss the next one. See you guys in the future.